with another edition of Gen Sports Corner back at you for December 4th, 2023. I'm your host, Jen. This is my co-host, Ryan. We back at it again. And, um, hey, last night, um, first time we got an ass whooping in a long time, we're going to talk about it. Talk about the good, the bad, the ugly, the even uglier, and get into the nitty gritty. So um, without further ado, man, let's talk about it, man. What's your thoughts about last night's game? Prime time. Um, it was an absolutely pitiful performance, man. Like just from top to bottom. Like when you look at this game, you um you rush the ball nine times. Like, you know, you do not, you cannot like rush, like, you know, run the ball that many times and expect to win football games. You know, you're not keeping a balanced attack, and then you pass the ball 45 times. You know what I mean? So that's like I understand they're stopping the run, but you eventually at some point have to bring the run back into the game. And just, you can't completely abandon it. So that's what they did, and they got punched in the mouth. And then not only that, the Niners can do whatever they want on them. They ran the ball 28 times, and then they passed the ball 27 times. I don't think you can get any more of a more balanced attack than that. And that just tells you they were doing whatever they wanted on us at any given time. And that just tells you that, you know, and I saw a stat that um, showed that Slay gave up 33 yards. And that's not a lot. And then I saw another one where Bradbury gave up zero yards, meaning he didn't allow a single catch in that game. So that tells you right there. It's that middle part of the defense that is the problem. It's the linebackers, and that's where they were picking that middle of the field. So, you know, that's a big problem, and it's a huge concern, which I think is also huge of that, which I'm sure we'll bring up later, that huge signing of Shaq Leonard today. So hopefully that'll help it because, you know, from top to bottom, when you look at this Niners team, man, you know, the way they dominated us, it's like you look at this team and you're like – could they really get past us to go to the Super Bowl this year? Because they just look dominant from just top to bottom. Or was it, are we exhausted? We're playing three games within 13 days. Do you think it's a little bit of us being exhausted from with that stretch, having emotional victories against the Chiefs, and then you got another emotional victories against the Bills? And then I forget, what, the, what was the third game? I think there was... Something like that. Chiefs, Bills, and then was it the Cowboys before that? I don't remember. Um, I'm not entirely sure. I I don't think who... Hold on. I, I got it. I got you. Don't worry. So before that, we played – yeah, it's the Cowboys. Cowboys, Chiefs, and Bills. The Cowboys. Yeah, so when you have those kind of, you know – you know, emotional victories, you know, you're, you know, you're just, I guess you're just tired. I don't know. There's some fatigue into it, but at the same time, you still have to show up, you know what I mean? So there's really no excuse to this. We just got flat out manhandling. Well, what's your thoughts on it? Yes, I agree with your sentiments to a certain degree. And I'll add on to that um, by the fact that I don't think they got manhandled as much as they got out strategized, out coached. Out coached, yeah. So, and I'll have to go back and look at the film. It seems as though we were getting pretty good penetration into the backfield. They weren't able to run up the middle on us. That was a no go. But when they did try to run up the middle, they had an Arizona running team. They were very mm-hmm. methodical and selective about what gaps they were going to allow us to shoot through and then yeah. cutting back opposite of that. So mm-hmm. some of those big runs from Christian McCaffrey, and I could see him, I could see, I could see him with the vision looking at, okay, this is my cut about a half a second, second before he made it. But those gaps were not that big that he was running through. They, it yeah, seemed like very well. It seemed like something that was schemed up, like a specific <laughs> trait that they saw that the Eagles have a tendency to do, and they schemed it up to take advantage of their progress their aggressiveness shooting certain gaps and redirect them because like you would even on some of those, some of those runs you would see Jordan Davis get through or Jalen Carter get through and they'll go you'd have you'd have McCaffrey going this way and Jalen Carter go right by him and he'll, he'll just miss him but he was being right, right. 
being steered that way, right? Correct. Um, that's mm -hmm. just my opinion. Like I said, I'll have to go back and look at the tape, but that's I noticed that on a couple of plays. Now, a couple of plays, yeah, they did get blown, blown off the ball, but for the most part, they look pretty stout up front, but they look like yeah. he got out schemed. Like it, it's right. like something that I realized it after the game, but during the game, I wasn't able to realize it quick enough to adjust in the moment. It's, it seems like something very, very simple. Um, okay. Cause I think they're both, I think they're both very good teams. I think they're both the class of the NFC. And, oh, yeah, sure. and, and people, people look at one game and it's not just the Eagles and say they're done because last time I remember what weren't the 49ers supposed to be dead in the water three weeks ago, they lost three in a row. They were like the worst team ever. People forgot, yes, uh, right? So yeah. people right. have selective and short-term memory. Um, mm -hmm. Going into this game, I thought that this game was going to be the toughest one on the schedule. I thought that the Bills were tough, but I, I thought that we match up scheme-wise well, and we just don't make mis as many mistakes as them. Um, yes. Thing with the Chiefs beforehand, the Chiefs—they're not as good as they were last year. I'm saying that because I, I I keep tabs on them every week. They are they try to go another year without having good wide receivers. They didn't have to cheat it last year, did they? Did they still have them last year? No. Yeah. No, they're not sure. And, and they got away with it last year, but they, they're they paying for it dearly this year. Oh, um, yeah. They don't have any options, even with a healthy Kelsey. I know he's a little banged up, but he's still he's still top tight end. I think he's the top oh, tight end. Still. And they don't yeah. have an answer outside of him. All right. Yeah. So, now, and then you run into a team that runs the ball. They do the simple things, straight up and down, no special effects. Now, they do movement pre-snap behind the line, and they do a lot of those games and whatnot. But for the most part, they are right in front of you. You know what's coming, right? And yeah. same same vein as the Eagles, right? So mm -hmm. I, I think it's I think it's a scheme thing mostly that they'll have to go into the locker room, go into the film room, and look at what tendencies that the, the 49ers saw on film from last year and from this year, from the defensive side of the ball, and figure out what one, two, or three little things they noticed that they were just able to be a half a step ahead of us. Because yeah. that game, they didn't start pulling away until later, but it was a slow progress. Yeah. And they kept doing the same thing over and they kept spamming the same thing over and over again. I, I think from a, a blocking standpoint, you have these yeah. guards and centers, they're, they're redirecting these, these defensive tackles into a certain gap, or you have misdirection where Hassan Reddick is running to pursuit and it has to put the brakes on, right? It's I, that's yeah. tape. That's tape to me, right? Mm -hmm. um, and it's hard to make those adjustments in the moment. You might make them, you might realize that adjustment 15 minutes after the game is over. By that time it's too late. Yeah. Right? Or you right. might notice it in the third quarter, but by by that time you're down by two scores and now you can't even scheme it up to try to get back in the game the way you could have. Now you have to take more risk and now you play differently. You know, it, mm -hmm. it's, so I, I think it's, they're, you know, physical, fix, fixable issues. Um, oh, for sure. So that's my take on it. Right. Yeah, no, I feel you. I think there was also very poor tackling too, as far as, you know, especially when you got Debo Samuel running off to the races. I think it was, he had two big plays that I noticed that he just like he just took off. I mean, he is great after the catch. Don't get me wrong; he's a really good receiver, so it's not really a shock to me. But at the same time, you can't you can't let him run off like that and just it's just he just outraced us. You know what I mean? And just the, some of the tackling was just awful. Right. I mean, that's and that's going to be gut check Monday. They're going to go in and they're going to play that that play on the big screen, and then when they're done playing on the, that on the big screen, guess what they're going to do? The coach is going to rewind it back and play it again. And then he's going to yeah. rewind it back and play it again. And he's going to run it back another 10 times cool. and play it again, right? Just to make sure the message sinks in. Yeah. See, what, what scares me with these Niners, man, is like, it's like when you look at the team, right? It's like, how many holes do you see with them? It's like, I feel like our secondary has played good at times and big moments, but I feel like they're very torturable. You know what I mean? I don't know if that's from a scheme scam standpoint or maybe they're more man-to-man -man corners or are they just getting burnt? Like, what do you think? I don't think so. I think at times they're just not getting um, pressure quick enough. There's a couple of throws there where, man, I'm, I'm looking at I'm looking at the back end, like a, like a third and seven or whatnot. I'm looking at the back end. I'm like, man, they are on them like blue. He got nowhere to go. And then I'm looking at the line. I'm like, 
why does he still have time? And then another two seconds, boom, somebody gets open. So I don't um, – I think this the secondary, I'd give them overall probably like a, a B overall. I don't think mm-hmm. they're great. I don't think they're really playing bad. I think that um just in case there's not enough continuity between the front seven and the back back four. Like when the when the front seven is on them like blue, the front four isn't getting there maybe let's say 40% of the time and you allow guys to get some plays off. Or when the front's getting there, now you have guys playing five yards off the ball and are getting a quick slant here and there. Like Debo is getting a lot of quick slants. Right. And it's not just that. Um, right. So I think that's a uh, shortest side is not a rookie coordinator like Brian Johnson is. However, it's his first time with this personnel. Now, yeah. you know, you know, Kyle Fuller, you know, some of those other players on that Chicago defense, you don't really know Darius Slay or Bradbury or a lot of these guys. Yeah. You've gotten the training camp and you, you've had, what 11 12 games now but you're still gelling people don't understand that and they don't want to hear it but the truth is your first year as a coordinator you are gelling with the players and trying to figure out what they work best what what positions they fit best in right yeah and to me i think that just takes time so i mean Mm -hmm. i just go back and I, I want to go back and I want to look at the 49ers schedule real quick because I, I just want to really drill this point down because 49ers are now nine and three, but not too long ago, they were, people had questions about them. They wanted to know, are, are they pretenders? Are they even a viable team? Can they even compete against the Philadelphia's of the world or the Seattle's or the Dallas's of the world? Because you look at that stretch, they started out five and no oh, on fire. Eagles, yeah. 49ers. And then after just completely torching the Cowboys, we all love seeing them get their asses beat. Oh, um, of course. They lost by two points to the Browns. And then you come back the next week and you lose on the road again against the Vikings by five points. And then you come back to home and you get fucked up by the Bengals 31-17. to 17. And now everybody's wondering, like, do they even deserve to be in the NFL at this point? It's, it's completely ludicrous. Like, people, yeah. people's emotions – Emotional range just fluctuates like a roller coaster. It's it's one thing yeah. to be realistic about what's in front of you. If you're playing like dog shit, you're playing like dog shit. But yeah. you have to. You can't get engrossed to the engrossed it to the point where it's just like, well, I guess we might as well just hang them up. Ain't, ain't no reason doing film study or trying next week. Like, no, you see yeah. what's fixable. What is it, and what are your objectively? What are your prospects of success moving toward during the season, moving forward? And both the 49ers and the Eagles, I still look at them both as elite teams. You know, oh, yeah. you know, I'll I'll veer off real quick before we kind of segue over. People, that's that's why boxers are so afraid to lose their O. Because as soon as you lose that O, now everybody in their moms is just like, oh, they were never good. They always been a bum. Who are they again? What's their name? Oh, I forgot mm-hmm. who they are already. Right. When in reality, you get two top fighters to go into the ring. Is a draw possible? Yeah, but typically there's a winner and a loser. And sometimes um, you could have two evenly matched teams and one team, they just got your number that day and just jack you all up, flip you up. They flip your teeth upside down, right? We've done yeah. it to others and we got a ton to us yesterday, right? But that yeah. is, but what you do when you're a great fighter, when you're a great football team, both the same. You go back, you sit down and say, damn, I got messed up and put ice on this. Look at the film. Do I want to fight this person again? I don't know. Let me look at the film. I can fix that. Yeah. Can I fix this? Yeah. Can I fix that? Yeah. Yeah, I want to fight them again. I'm, I'm going to see them. We're going, we're going to run this shit back, right? That's that's what it is. It's the way – that's the way the coaches look at it. That's the way you have to objectively, objectively look at it, look at it as, as a player. And you have okay. to have that um, – you have to have that composure – even when the fans are losing their minds and think that the world is is melting right in front of the sun, no, yeah. you know, right. so that that's what they're doing. We um, we know that. So we're having these discussions because we're fans, and that's that's what our job is to do: is to well, not not all of us, but mo- many of us to lose our minds and 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 freak out. And it's their jobs to make the adjustments and come back and play well. Because I uh, um, I remember two thousand four, we were seven and zero, eight and zero. McNabb and T.O. were just – it was unfair. They were just torching people. And then we ran into 
the Pittsburgh Steelers, who were like seven and one at the time, and they they jacked us up. <laughs> they they yeah. jacked us up real bad. Palomalu in that defense, we had no answers for them. That three four front, we we had faced four three fronts all year, and as soon as we got a three four front, not just a, a three four front, but a great three four front in that Pittsburgh team, right? Um, Joey Porter, yeah. Palomalu, Ryan Clark. Um, big boy in the middle. I don't remember his name, but he was a mainstay for years. Not Casey Hayward or somebody before him. Um, but yeah, and we got jacked up. And guess what? Did that stop us from going to the Super Bowl? No, because one, we had a great team. T.O., T. McNabb, Dawkins, Westbrook, Trotter. They all looked themselves in the mirror and said, we're as good as them. They schemed it up better than us. Let's see what we did wrong and get back on it and then go back on a, another 10-game win streak. All right. Mm. And that's what it's got to be. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think uh, Jalen has the dog on him, man. I, I think I think you're right, though. I think they're going to go back to the drawing board. Hold up. Let me get this leg. But um, no, I think they're going to go back to the drawing board. And I think they're going to, um, you know, they're going to look at what they did wrong. And I, I think they'll correct that. I don't think it'll be the same game if when we do meet him again. I think it'll be completely different. And um. But my question is, do you think this punch in the mouth, which I don't think, will prevent them from playing a good game against Dallas and winning? Because I, I think they're going to respond. I think the great teams respond. Yeah, I don't think so. I think they will respond. You, you get your pride. Yeah, think... and people, mm-hmm. that, people that um, not – pride is, is a very – ambiguous word so like not pride in a sense that you're conceited or overly confident but just having pride in what you bring to the field every week the product that you put on the field you got your pride checked in that sense so they're yeah they are i win lose or draw i expect them to come back out and be throwing bombs with reckless abandon so oh sure yeah um, and we get i think we got it back too say that say that again we we get Goddard back too, I believe. So I think that'll be a huge help in the blocking and passing game. That will be huge. And to your point, they've made a they made an addition with um Shaq Leonard. And that's a huge addition. One, because yeah, you need to address the linebacking situation up the middle. Obviously, you're you have the best D tackle combo that we've seen in years, I would say, since um the Williams Pat Williams and uh, the other Williams guy from the Vikings. They used to be two big boys in the middle. He should be just wrecking stuff way better. Oh, yeah. um, but you need you need that linebacker in the middle. And Shaq, I, I saw that they <laughs> – the Colts gave him – the fans gave him a standing ovation after learning that he wouldn't, wasn't wasn't going to be back. Like, that organization is, is, is inept in, in many ways. And I don't know how – Three-time Pro Bowler that still has tread left on the tires. You you let him slip away to a Super Bowl contender. That doesn't make sense. Maybe they're having a problem, yeah, but uh, that is going to be an impactful addition. Certainly. Yeah, yeah. I think he has sixty-five tackles this year so far. Oh, does he? Yeah, I think I think that's what I saw. It could be wrong. I mean, if you want to look up the stat. I forgot what game it was, but I remember looking at a Colts game and I remember seeing some dude flying around I'm like, who is that dude? Shaq Leonard. Sideline yeah. side. He's sideline to sideline dude, man. And he he uh he played with a little bit of a nasty streak too. So that's they need that. Yeah, for sure, man. Linebacking is definitely uh something we've needed for a while. Yeah, because Nicholas Morrow is not cutting it. Yeah, and the Kobe Dean can't stay healthy to save his life. I know, I know. Um and, and you know it's good because not good that this happened, but the Cowboys lost uh, Leighton Van Der Esch. I don't know for the season or not, but they were in negotiations with with Leonard, and he decided against them because he's a good dude, stand up guy. He said, "Forget the Cowboys," and he came. Yeah, yeah he he doesn't want to go to those convicts, bro. <laughs> right, exactly. Nah. And then to your point, you know you're getting Goddard back, but. They today I was seeing a report that um they reached out to Zach Ertz. So yeah. that would be great for them to run that bat because he, again, he still has tread on the tire. He wasn't going to get anything accomplished out in Arizona. And 
you run it back with, with Zach Ertz. Now you have another elite pass catcher who can still block. And you team him back up with Doc, with Goddard. I say run it back, man. Easy. That's yeah, that's huge. I think that's a big help for them. Huge help, man. You you get you can get two impact players for discount price. Like I don't know how how he keeps doing it. You know, it's it's almost like because GMs for whatever reason, I don't know why they they just pass on some of these guys. Even if they pass the physical, they're just like, yeah, you're you're, you're too old, or you had too many years. Like, it's just like what? Like think about it. That the Andy Reid Super Bowl year. Why is this playing out the same way? We got our asses handed to us. And then uh, who was it? I don't remember who it was. And then the next week, we uh, benched Mark Seminole and we picked up Jeremiah Trotter with two broke knees. And he was still an upgrade over Seminole. And we, and that, I think that was the catalyst after we got jacked up by the Steelers. We went and re signed Trotter to fortify the middle. And it didn't matter that he couldn't even cover. It's just the fact that he was such a dominant presence in the middle. He started scaring people. I think that's what helped catapult us defensively to get back to get to the Super Bowl. Yeah. When- Jeremiah Trotter was a monster, bro. Yeah, uh, I, just, I miss that type of playing linebacker. Right, exactly. I, so it was a great move, and it's so obvious. There, there are so many good players out there that just get passed over because they're just like, um, you, you not, you don't fit the cut. When when they're clearly better than some of the guys on your roster, right? Yeah. Uh, and I I think the Eagles they're just stealing players this year like they did with Dominican Sue and and Linval Joseph last year. Like yeah. Pickups that were critical and I think in us making a Super Bowl and fortifying the run defense and they got them for pennies on the dollar. When they yeah. honestly Sue could have been starting for many teams last year and for whatever reason they. Maybe his price was too high, or they just like, ah, oh, you're too old. Like, we ain't going to sign him. It's like, okay, we'll take him. And then just he's being a menace, right? Yeah. So, you know, great signing with Shaq Leonard and then Zach Ertz. And I, I think that that's going to really help fortify this defense going into the Cowboys game because I think you're going to need that, right? You start yeah. taking away that middle, especially on some of the quick, quick slant routes and the hot routes. Then you start putting some more pressure defensively. You put that mental pressure on these these teams because it's not necessarily you give up a ten yard gain, cool. But it's like, did did how easy was that for you? Was it ten yards of like blood, sweat, and tears, or was it ten yards and you like wasn't a sweat? If if you're having to fight tooth and nail for every ten yards, then it's like, okay, cool, yeah, you got this. But you know, it's a matter of time before I put them clamps down on you. It's it's coming, right? So. And I, I saw that in this game. Like, there was a cu- – oh, man. There was a couple plays, including the one that Darius Slade, when he broke on the ball, he was not able to get back there in time because it had pick six written all over it. Right? Oh, there, there. I know what you're talking about. Again, the abilities there, that's uh, scheming and and just uh, player placement. Scheming yeah. and player placement. Because, right. like, we're down, like, seven or ten points at, at that point, and boom, he's right on it. Good yeah. if he wouldn't have still been running right now, right? So, oh. yeah, I, I think these pickups are great. Um, y'all in the comments, you know, YouTube, Facebook, whatever, let us know what you think about everything we said. Let me know what you guys think about the pickups. Um, you know, with with the middle linebacker we just got, with the possible um, uh, us reuniting with Zach Ertz. Let, let us know what you think about that, and let us know what you think about the Eagles going into this next game. Will they bounce back, make the adjustments? Are there adjustments to be made, or is the team suck? Are they great? Are they world beaters? Are they absolute trash? Let us know. Um, any more thoughts on the Eagles? Um, I'm trying to think. There, there was so many. I just can't um, think of. I don't think there's any others. I just know. Um, I was concerned up the middle. Up the middle was covered. We got Shaq Leonard. Um, how you? Let's see. I honestly think that's it. I think, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Um, is AJ Brown dealing with an injury? Because I don't know if he doesn't seem like himself, or like I, I've seen him fell like quite a few times and like seemed like he was in some pain or discomfort. No, I, I didn't notice. Um, I will have to keep a, a eye on it. I just think they've just been uh, keying in on him and and doing a good job with that. Um, because yeah. let's be honest. 
Smitty's just been like going off. Like you, you, you pick your poison, right? If when AJ's you know quiet, it's usually because he's getting doubled and tripled, and then Devonte is just going to cook whoever, and then vice versa. So yeah. it's not necessarily a bad thing. I haven't seen anything like egregious. So, right. Yeah, I mean that's that's pretty much it on my end. Yeah, so I, I think that's what it is, and we'll touch base again. I think we should do like a um a preview for the Eagles uh, uh Dallas game because it's, it's Dallas week. Why not, right? Oh, um, sure, man. And, and and um see how the injuries are. Like check the injuries sheet. You know, see who's healthy, who's not, and get ready for this game coming up, man. Because yeah. come on, man, like one or two more wins, and we lock up that that uh first round by regardless. So because just because we don't play the 49ers again doesn't mean that they're going to win all their games. Same as with us. Like exactly. the other teams have to keep up their end of the bargain as well. The Eagles lose. Well, that means everybody else has to keep winning. Like, and last time I checked, it's very hard to be perfect. So as long as we take care of things, so it's 12 games in, we got four games left. I think if we go two and two, um, I think we get the first round by. If we go oh, three, sure. one, we definitely get the first round by. Oh, yeah, definitely. Wow. I know you have to win this Cowboys game, though. But this, I think this is a must win for us for uh, division purposes. Actually, uh, no, I, I'm wrong. They got, a t- they got a tough stretch. <laughs> so so the Eagles coming up, you obviously have, have Dallas next. And then after that, you got the Seahawks. I think they're better than the Seahawks. You got the Giants. They're better than the Giants. The Cardinals, okay. even with Kyler Murray back, they're better than the Cardinals. And then you have the Giants. Okay. I, I think – I see the Eagles going. We have one, two, three, four, five games left. Uh, I think we go three and two or four and one. Yeah, yeah, because I know Dallas has us next. They got Buffalo. They got Miami. And I think they got the Lions. So right. they're yeah. stretching tough. Yeah, they have a way tougher schedule than us. Um, they're facing the murderer's row. Yeah, pretty much. That's it's their gauntlet and the schedule right now, right? Including us. So, yeah, yeah. So, yeah let, let us know what you guys think about that. And, um, I think that's it for this episode. Thanks for tuning in, y'all. And, um, we're gonna catch y'all the next one. I'm your host, Jen, my co host right here, Brian. Yep. The next one, man. Deuces. Yep. Peace.